Alrighty guys, so we're going to go ahead and make a little bit of a change here. We're going to get started working on input. Um, this is obviously very important. Uh, as I'm talking, I'm just going to be building a little bit of a scene here. So we're going to go ahead and make a ground, uh, and I'm going to stop narrating what I'm building here. Uh, input obviously is incredibly important, right, for uh, our players to actually be able to do things in our game. Um, so I'm going to make it just for right now, just uh, the ability for us to be able to run around. Um, we're going to go over here. We're going to make our character not a trigger, which is good. We already have that. And we have, we'll make it dynamic physics. So that way then we get some gravity going on. And we should, as soon as we hit play, see our character fall to the ground. Uh, well, did I actually make them a trigger? Whoops. Or I didn't put a collider on the ground. That's probably a problem, isn't it? So, add a box collider. Now when the player falls, it should hit the ground. Which is a really exciting game, I know, right? Um, that being said, we have a player controller script already. I think the first most important thing for us to do is add a public float. Or, well, let's make it in because it's a little bit easier to mess with. Speed. We got to be able to edit it, so I'm making it public. You can make it private and serialize it. That should be fine, but because, you know, most games, especially platformers, have things that update your speed, you should be um, uh, making it as accessible as you can to other scripts. Um, now, the big thing that I generally tend to do is make another variable that is called direction, and that's going to actually be represented by an int. Um, or I'm sorry. Uh, yes, let's make that in the direction and let's go and make one more variable called float. And this is going to be X axis. And that's going to make sense in just a minute. Um, obviously when you're moving in a 2d platformer, you're going to, if you have a joystick, move left and right, correct? Or if you're using the mouse and keyboard, you're going to use the left and right arrow or the DNA air or DNA keys for wise controls. Now, Unity has already kind of taken all those controls and put them into one place for us because Unity has a pretty robust input system. Now, there are two different input systems in Unity. Right now, for 110, we're going to be focusing on the old input system. As soon as you get into 160, we will start using the new, but I want to make sure you guys have all the foundations down before we get into something a little bit more complicated like that. So, first things first, let's go ahead and say that our uh, x-axis equals input dot get axis and the name we have to put in quotes. You can see here that it's asking for a string axis name. Whenever a, a function is asking for a string, you have to put in quotes and we're going to get horizontal. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for the time being. I'm going to pull up Unity again. We'll see, it's got to load. I'm going to show you where that comes from. If we go to Edit, uh, Project Settings, this might take me a moment to find. Uh, Input Manager, ah, here it is, Axes. So you can create your own axes in here. However, Unity comes already pre-built with the horizontal axes started for us. Same thing with vertical. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. And if we look at this very first horizontal, we can see it's named horizontal. It's used with left, right, A, and D. And the rest of these, I wouldn't worry too much about because honestly, once you start using the new input system, it is very uh, different. But this gets us the foundation for a very simple game. Um, now, what it does is get axis is actually going to return, if we look here, a float. Something we didn't get into in the last uh, function or the last video is functions, which get axis is, can also return something. So let's say I wanted my update health to, I don't know, return an int to tell us what our current health is. We could say return players current health. And then, 
any time we got this, we could, or any time we ran update health, we could get the current health and use that elsewhere. So if our player controller, for example, were to say, um, or let's actually do take away health, right? We could say, um, let's change this here and we'll return player's current health and we could change this back. We could say, you know, int current health equals all this stuff that we did in order to take away health. And we could then check to say, I don't know, if, if health is zero or less, die, right? And you could do something with that. If current health is zero or less, die. That's basically what we're doing here is we are assigning our X axis variable that we made up here to whatever our uh, get axis gives us. So let's go back over to Unity and let's check that out real quick because we should be able to see that immediately. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. We know that that code's in our player controller. And as I hold down one, it, you can see it goes up to one. As I hold down left, or I'm sorry, as I hold down D, it goes up to one. As I hold down A, it goes down to negative one, right? So now there's a couple things we need to do with this. I'm going to pause the video for a second and find a sprite for us. Alrighty, so I found out I wasn't recording. I accidentally hit stop after I found this good, good picture of my baby girl, Rue. Um, so we're going to get back into it a little bit. So if we right here, if we hold down left and right, like I had said, we go ahead and we see that we are able to move or we're not able to move, but we see that it's reading correctly what where our right and left is, right? So the, um, let's see, let's find our code. What we're going to need to do, ignore this for just a second. We're going to need to, in order to actually move, get a hold of our rigid body 2D, right? Um, that's what actually moves us around in a, a 2D game, or in most games, actually. Um, until you start building, like, higher fidelity character controllers, this is how you're going to be moving your character around. And it's actually pretty good in 2D stuff. Um, we're constantly getting what direction we should be going in for x-axis. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this direction. Yeah, delete. Yeah, we could delete the direction. Um, the reason that we put the input in update is because fixed update doesn't happen every frame. Okay, we do want to update the uh, rigid body every frame, but because input is so vital, we'd want to um, get that every single frame where fixed update actually works off of something called the physics step, which is how often Unity updates physics calculations. So we're going to go ahead and get a hold of our rigid body and go ahead and assign our velocity this but the problem here is our velocity is a vector 2 not a float because if we look our speed is an int our x-axis is a float and time dot delta time is a float the reason we do time dot delta time is it accounts for any weird frame rate hiccups um, and make sure that everything is always consistent um, so a vector two is really just two numbers. You could think if you were looking at a graph, you know, the X and Y axis, that's kind of what's going on here. In this case, the vector two is being applied to our velocity, but it could be applied to all kinds of things. It could be applied to position or to, uh, you know, a math equation or something like that. A vector two doesn't necessarily always mean velocity. It just means two parts of a number. Um, so in order to make this work, we have to say that velocity equals a new vector two, where our X component, because we're moving on the X axis, right? Is all of this gobbledygook, this math here, which we're basically saying, hey, whatever direction we're moving in, let's multiply it by our speed. And for frame rate, let's make sure time dot delta times there. And then we really don't want to change the y component of it not with this anyway we'd be doing that with a jump oh not in this so we just tell it keep that keep whatever your y component is okay 
So this on its own should move us left and right. Let me go ahead and restart it. As long as I make sure that my speed is something, right? I'm gonna make it 10. And we'll see, I'm always real bad judge of how uh, we should be moving. However, we also have to, I forgot one variable I knew I was going to, add the rigid body here. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize player health and actually bring it down because we don't need to look at that. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, we should see some movement, very slow movement. And this is one of the reasons why I really like public variables, right? Because I can go ahead and crank this up and we'll see that I start moving much faster. And it looks like I would want my speed to be, I don't know, somewhere around 400 for a good little snappiness. Now, the tricky part here is in most games, you would want your player to look in the direction they're going. So if I were to like maybe click this flip, well now Rue's looking the right way, right? If I go right, now she's looking the right way. But if I go left, not so much. This is where I really want to get into if statements for us, okay? We went into input. Let's get into some if statements. An if statement is built with the word if, opening parentheses, and then you check something. You say if, in this case, we want to see which direction we're going in. We can say if x axis is greater than or equal to zero, then we want to, uh, we got to check to see, do we want to flip? If it's greater than zero, we would be going to the right, correct? Because when I move right, it's one. So that would make me think I would want to flip my character so that he's looking right, or she's looking right. Sorry, Rue. Um, and then when it's less than zero, I would want to be looking left. Now, because my image is by default looking left, my flip has to be going on when I am moving right or zero, okay? Because I just, I want my character to look right by default all the time when I'm not moving. And I, um, uh, when I'm moving right, obviously it needs to flip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, mm, I'm not gonna do get component. You could do get component or we could do private sprite renderer, my sprite renderer. And on start, we can do the get component. So we only have to do this once. If we were to do this in update, just get the component every frame, that's a big waste of resources that we don't need. But we know that the sprite renderer, this guy right here, has a flip variable that I can edit in the inspector. So chances are, it's probably public. Flip X, perfect. So I can do, or at least accessible. There are ways to make private variables accessible. We know that when it's greater than or equal to zero, we want this true. And we're gonna say else, we could do else if X axis is less than zero, but really there's only three options, right? Greater than zero, equal to, equal to zero, or less than zero. And because of this, because we already have two of the options here, the greater than and the equal sign, we really don't need an else if right here. Um, if this was a bigger uh, condition, we could have multiple else ifs and then have some else's. Uh, but we really don't need that here in this case. Uh, well, when I, I, I misspoke there. We can have multiple else ifs, but in order to finish it, kind of like the catch all for whatever's left, you have a singular else. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it in here and say false. Because obviously when I am not, when X axis is not greater than zero and not equal to zero, I should be looking left, which means I don't want to flip the X axis. So let's go ahead and try this out. So when it's zero, you see immediately flipped. And now, oh, I didn't set the speed to 400. I did that in play mode. Don't forget, anything you do in play mode will be undone. So now, boop, boop. Look at that. And that's generally how you get player movement. There are some times that the... Um, uh, uh, that you're not getting an axis, actually. You're getting, for example, an input or a button uh, press. So... I'm going to, just for the sake, we're going to get into this in the next video, but this will be a good segue. 
we're gonna say public bool pressed jump button. And I'm gonna say press jump button equals, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna say if, and we're gonna start with input again, right? This is gonna be uh, getting us into our jump code. Uh, we're gonna say get key down and let's say our jump button is space. When you're looking for an actual button, we can use something called a key code. Okay, so you could do key code dot space. We're for right now, just going to print pressed jump button. That Boolean will come in in the next video when we start talking about ray casting. But with this, we should be able to come back over to Unity, and when we press space, we'll see that it prints pressed jump button. So there is the option to put in strings for our um, uh, whatever button you want, but that is a very inefficient way to do it. I would almost always say use key code and space. Now again, there are ways to do this better. There is a get button down, but this really, because of us moving to the new input system in your guys' next class, I would encourage just worry about using get key down and get access, um, simply because these are completely irrelevant later. Um, and yep, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave comments down below or uh, shoot me a message on Discord.